Hello, my name is Hemingway Jones and I make videos about fountain pens for curious people. Welcome to a very special episode. Today I'd like to speak a bit about my struggle with enduring depression and some things that help me to get through. Now I feel like I just need to mention if you're having a serious issue, please go speak to someone professionally. But these are just some things that help me to endure it, to document it, and to improve myself. Let's take a look. Ernest Hemingway struggled with depression his entire life. Winston Churchill described his dark moods as a black dog following him. Stephen Fry describes it as a kind of mental vampire that drains you of everything that is you. For me, I feel as if I am fading away, losing my corporal state like a living ghost. I am out of sync with everything around me, with time moving slowly, and no one can see or reach me. I am haunting those around me, incapable of connecting, withering into nothingness. When I am in that state, I feel like I can never cross back over that I will never find substance again. I feel like a faint shadow cast by the wick's end of a flickering candle. This is the pernicious trap of depression. Once you are in it, you feel as if you will never get better that you will never heal and never be yourself again. Elizabeth Wurzel, author of Prozac Nation, described it so well. That's the thing about depression. A human being can survive almost anything as long as she sees the end in sight. But depression is so insidious and it compounds daily that it's impossible to ever see the end. Fortunately, years of journaling helps to keep me rooted in this world, to recognize the signs that I am fading, and to take action before I pass into the underworld and dissolve completely. The power of journaling is the ability to explore my dark moods when I am in a better state, to search for causes or warning signs, and even when there are no causes, I can at least recognize when a shift is coming on, when the world is corroding around me. This way, I can take action, even if it is as simple as providing a reminder early in the process of fading away that I have felt this way before and that I will feel better again. This simple truth is often lost when I am a ghost. Documenting this state helps to remind me that I have been there before. I can flip back through pages and see other difficult periods that I have endured. It is all right there in my journal. It is also an effective way to search for some positive points within the deluge, something brighter and better to aim for that I can write and think about. Another thing that I've learned is to place exit ramps on that path to perdition. For me, this means in part romanticizing my life, finding beauty in the smallest things, the most mundane of actions, and in surrounding myself with beauty and intention. 
to maintain a sense of calm, safety, and a pervasive sense that everything in the end will be okay. This means giving contemplation to beautiful pens, beautiful nibs, and in taking joy in them, joy that anchors me in this world, that fills me with gratitude and with an appreciation of the immense possibility that arises from a single stroke with a fine writing instrument. Writing in itself is often a mundane task, but with a beautiful journal and the expanse of my emotional landscape to explore, it becomes a transcendent experience, literally in this case. It is also often a protective one to keep me at my core. Often the glint of light on the edge of a nib, the depth of beautiful acrylic of the barrel, the glassiness of ink on a page, reminds me that there is an absolute physical world that exists completely distinct from my perceptions of it, and that it is a constant and it is unaffected by my state of mind. I find comfort in its perpetuity, even if the physical form of the universe is completely indifferent to me, I have always found reassurance in this. These adamantine things, as rooted as earth and stone, are strong enough to brace myself against. We measure our characters against the absoluteness of stone, and when we do, we had better not come up empty. I wrote that line about rock climbing, but I find it equally meaningful in my place in this world. We develop our characters so that we have a reservoir of strength to tap into when the world goes dark. And living well, treating others fairly, being generous and kind keeps you on a brighter path. Confronting a dispassionate absolute is a great turning point, like kicking off from the bottom of a deep pool. The path to reemergence may be long, but the momentum propels you toward the surface. While this is progressing, I am writing about it in my journal as a counterbalance to the loops of intrusive thoughts, anxieties, and distractions. I can read and examine all of this later, when this has passed and I am substantial once again. This period will also serve as a landmark in my personal geography that I can return to again and again, knowing that I have persevered. You learn from each struggle, each interaction. It makes you a better person, more profound and more deeply human. The trick is to always aim for the light and to describe the positive things, even if they are very small, in your journal. Sometimes you must accept that this is a season in hell, but that it will pass and that the light will emerge once again. Sometimes survival is your best tactic, but as you claw your way back, you will do so on stepping stones of positivity that you can describe in your daily journaling. This is the promise of spring also, of renewal, and as sure as the world has seasons, so too does our mind. Great tempests, winds, change, the dying off of phases and ideas, cold, indifferent, stillness, and a blossoming once again, a rapturous return of a re-energized self made stronger by the pain it has endured. 
this is how journaling and fountain pens save me every day. They provide a profound joy for me in simple actions like signing my name or taking notes. The scribing noise of the nib vibrating against the grain of magnificent paper. The colorful, profound wetness of ink the occasional splatter, the meditative process of filling a pen, cleaning a pen, organizing a collection. The beauty of fountain pens, that refined, effective form of them, and the joy of smoothness in writing with them, remind me that this world is a fine and beautiful place, even when my relationship to it is disturbed, even when I am alienated from myself. I know that I will be there again. I know that I endure that I am surrounded by people who love me. I need to only follow that line on the paper and I am sure to find myself once again. Write your way through it are words to live by. The world breaks everyone and afterward Many are strong at the broken places, but those that do not break, it kills. It kills the very good and the very gentle and the very brave impartially. Ernest Hemingway, A Farewell to Arms. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some value in it as well. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to open up to all of you and hopefully there's some techniques in here that will help you as well. If you've reached this far and you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you along for this journey with us. Also, membership is available. Consider becoming a member of the channel. We do a lot of fun things behind the scenes like blooper reels and letter exchanges and a lot of other stuff. I'd love to have you. So I release new videos each week and there's a live show each Tuesday night. So I promise we will see each other again further up the road. So take care.